In this video you are going to learn how to batch edit all your time-lapse pictures at once in Lightroom, how to make JPEG files out of the RAW files and then how to put them together to a video in Premiere Pro, but also how to make adjustments in Premiere Pro to all pictures at once, for example to make zooms. The first thing you need are the pictures for your time-lapse video. If you don't know how to take them, then watch my video how to make time-lapse videos first. So we need to get the pictures into Lightroom. Those are by the way all RAW files, so they are above 20 megabytes big. If you don't have RAW files, then you can't make as many adjustments as crazy editing as you can with RAW files. So you make a new catalog is the best. You just go new catalog and then give it a name. I called mine now uh, how to time lapse. And then you go on import photos and videos and just choose your folder wherever you have the picture stored. Just find it. Um, as you can see, I have here two different time lapse videos and I will import them both at the same time. Import. This will now take a little while. You see it here at the top. Good, now it's done. There are two things we want to do in Lightroom. The most important thing is that we make out of a RAW file, in this case it's called CR2, a JPEG file, because in Premiere Pro you cannot put in RAW files, you can only put in JPEG or PNG, that kind of stuff. And the second thing is that we want to make some color grading um, this is the first time as video and you can see that the brightness is different on pictures because sometimes the sun was out and sometimes the sun was behind clouds. So when we edit our pictures, obviously we will edit them all in the exact same way. So we have to choose a picture which is, which is some, somewhat medium to make our adjustment. Probably this one, it's, this one is brighter, like it's bright, it's darker than this one, but brighter than this one. So we make our adjustments on this picture and then synchronize it with all the other pictures. So we go on develop. The most important thing when you take a sky times video is, is that you don't overexpose your sky. So you rather underexpose all the rest but have the sky not overexposed. So you can see here that nothing is overexposed in my shot so I can get all the details back if I want to get them back. So some ways how to get the details in the sky back is to make blue darker. Okay, you can see, obviously we don't want to make it too crazy, but we get blue, we get more blue. And then probably take the highlights a little bit down so that the sky has a higher contrast. This is how it looked like, this is how it looks now, just in terms of sky. And Oh yeah, what I usually start with is, you know, profile correction for the lens and remove chromatic aberration, even though this shot doesn't really have so much chromatic aberration. Um, what we can notice now is that this area is very dark and also this could be slightly brighter. So we will pull up our shadows. Not too much because we know that there are some shots which are even brighter, so we don't want to make it too bright. And I want the grass to be a bit greener. <laughs> so I go on hue and then I change my green. I mean, I can make it crazy like this. Yay. But obviously I don't want that. So I, I am very gentle with my adjustments. Plus 10 only. Okay, now we copy everything. All the changes that we made. And now we select all the pictures we, we we want to put the changes on because we don't want to put that on our second time is video. So we press shift, now click and all the 376 pictures from this time lapse are selected. And now we press synchronize and all the changes are now put onto all the pictures. So each single picture has now the settings that I put onto the first, onto the one picture that I chose as my main picture. So let's have a look on the darker pictures, whether they are still too dark or whether it's okay. Uh, maybe it's okay. Sky looks a bit dark, but okay. 
and let's check the very bright ones and then you just make further adjustments so you can now for example choose one picture okay now let's do something crazy let's just say it's all black and white if you now only once press synchronize because they are already all selected then it would be now that they're all selected it's everywhere immediately synchronized just the first time you have to do it with the copy and then you know and then sync it is also here synchronized, it just takes time to process. But anyway, that was, you know, just for fun to show you how that works. So, yeah. Now our second one is this video. Um, you can see that I greatly underexposed it, just to make sure that I keep all the information in the, in the sky, because if I would have exposed it correctly for the field, then the whole picture would have looked like this, okay? The field would have been exposed well, but all the information would be missing from the sky. And I rather increase my shadows and get the information back. I go on 100% and I even do a bit on the black because I know that it just got darker and darker. Um, I also bring a bit back of the blue it's, can't see too much of the blue here bring down the highlights so that we have a stronger contrast in the sky uh, and standard yeah and that should be it for now um, I copy it again select all pictures and synchronize And now each picture is now synchronized too. So let's have a look on the very last picture. It was raining afterwards. Um, here, this is how the picture used to look like. This is how it looks now. It's just amazing what you can get out of raw files. Okay, now we want to export them all. And then we go on file export. We can say we want to call it Lightroom 7. Put into the subfolder. We can choose the size, quality, like we can say pictures should be only up to 4 megabyte big, for example, something like that. So this is mostly up to how long you want to wait till the whole thing rendered. And then you press export. And now one by one, each JPEG picture gets created. So all the pictures are exported now. And I want to bring all those time-lapse pictures into Premiere Pro to make a time-lapse video out of it. So I select them all. Um, first of all, this is my project. Uh, it's a project where actually, I actually already have it in here, okay. Honestly said, I have plenty of different shots, but I will now show you how I usually put them in, okay. So you probably might want to make a new sequence. I call it time lapse YouTube. And now I take them all and drag them, drag and drop in. This will take a few seconds, but just let it work. Okay, here we go. My mouse wheel broke, that's why I always have to use this button here to zoom in and out till my new mouse is there tomorrow. Um, first thing we can see that it is too much zoomed in. This is because our timeline has the wrong resolution. So we go on sequence, sequence settings, and you have to put in the frame size that your pictures have. So my frame size is 4,500 times 2532. 4,500 times 2532. Two. Okay, and now it is good. Um, for some reason, Premiere Pro puts it into the right order, but the back part is always in the front. So I now have to find out where the actual video starts. And this is very late. <laughs> But yeah, here, you, here we saw it somewhere here. 
somewhere here, okay. Let's zoom in. Yep, here we go. So all those pictures have to be in the end. That's why we... It's unbelievable how difficult it is to work without a mouse wheel. Okay, now they're all selected. And we drag them all the way to the end. Right now, every frame is five seconds long. And we want it to be, well, each picture should be one frame long. So I am, I have it on 25 frames per second. Um, so each picture should be one millisecond one long. So it's zero, 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 one. And then ripple shift, blah, blah, blah. This takes care of that they are all squeezed together now and not scattered throughout the whole timeline. Okay, here we go. They are all in this tiny bit here. And let's zoom in again. So here is our time-lapse video. So here's our time-lapse video, which doesn't run smooth because my computer can't handle real-time processing of all those pictures, which is okay. Now the timeline would already be ready to be exported. But what is if you want to, for example, have a slight zoom in or you want to make any kind of of changes to your timers video because the problem is once you like you can edit a single picture but once you select more than two you can't make adjustments to the color and you can't make adjustments to the image itself once you have it selected multiple clips selected you can't make changes to that so what you have to do is as i already showed you i have here this timeline with all the time-lapse sequences which are actually in here and then what I do is I have it on you have this project here then I write in uh, we already have our time-lapse YouTube if I wouldn't see it now I would write in I would put in here the name of it so I can drag my time-lapse YouTube into my timeline and now I can make all kinds of adjustments to it for example my picture is four and a half k this timeline is 4k so i can zoom out a bit mm, not as much something like this 87 and then i can say for example uh, that i want to make a transition like that i want to have a s slow zoom in during the video okay now I have a slow zooming in, if that's what you like. Or you can make further adjustments to the brightness, if you feel like. You can now make all kinds of adjustments to it, which is very handy. And yeah, then you just export it and you have your beautiful video. Here are the scenes that we created in the video. I hope you liked it and I hope you are also now able to create this kind of videos. If you have any further questions, just write in the comments. See you!